West Ham are being linked to Sevilla striker Yusuf El Nesri again. This is definitely a name that's familiar to Hammers fans. This is definitely a transfer rumour that's familiar to Hammers fans because when we sold Sebastian Haller to Ajax, David Moyes identified the Moroccan striker as the ideal replacement. This was David Moyes' number one target in the transfer window where we sold Haller to Ajax. Well, here's the thing. We sold Haller in January 2021. Over three years ago, we sold Haller and identified N. Nesri. And since then, up until now, we have been linked to him in every single transfer window. This is now the eighth transfer window that West Ham have been linked to N. Nesri. Now, usually I take these rumours with a pinch of salt. However, this time it's different. Because when David Moyes identified Yusuf El Nesri in January 2021 and said, that's the guy I want, his manager was Lopetegui. So this transfer rumour makes sense. Now, it might be clever journalism because sometimes transfer rumours have a little bit of guesswork. Let's be honest, they're made up, but they make a little bit of sense. And this one makes sense. So maybe, just maybe, there's a journalist that's going, ah, there you go. There's an easy transfer rumour. West Ham need a striker. West Ham have been linked to El Nesri for ages. And the manager of Sevilla that had El Nesri is now the new manager of West Ham. So it makes sense. But there might be a bit of credibility in the transfer rumour for the exact same reasons. The problem is that since we were linked to Yusuf El Nesri in January 2021 up until now, I barely watched him play because I only believe the transfer rumour for one window. January 2021. Every time he's been linked to us between then and now, I've, like I said, I've taken it with a pinch of salt. I don't believe it. So I, have, I haven't gone out my way to watch him and see what he's all about. Now, I've read a, a lot about him and listened to people's opinions about him, especially those whose opinions match mine on a lot of things. It could be about managers, teams, players, who I do know about or think I know about. They do, and my our opinions match up a little bit. So when they say something about Inesri, I'm sort of trusting it. And the profile sounds good. He's strong in the air. He's quite quick. And I had a little look at the statistics behind N. Nesri because I'm intrigued. What's the numbers like? So while I won't go watch the highlights of a player because I think they're misleading, I do like data. I do like statistics in football because they can be misleading as well. But I think they tell a little story. So I thought, I wonder what N. Nesri's numbers were under Lopetegui at Sevilla specifically. So I went and had a look. And that's what we're going to be discussing today as well as a few other players I've never heard of because welcome to the West Ham Transfer Rumour Show. It's not long till the window's open in a month's time. However, the Premier League have yet to confirm when the summer transfer window actually closes. The last day of August falls on a weekend. So it might be the Friday. It'll probably be the Monday. But we're waiting on official confirmation when the summer transfer window closes. But it means it's time for these transfer rumour shows. And I quite like them. Now I'm going to do a big disclaimer. It doesn't mean they're true. And it doesn't mean I believe them. These are just transfer rumours in the media. I like discussing them and getting your thoughts on them on a hypothetical basis. Anyway, here's what I discovered about N. Nesri. The 26-year-old Moroccan striker. I'm off to a good start, am I? 15 in 30 league appearances for N. Nesri this season. So he's continued his good form post Lopetegui. However, I wanted to know how he got on under the new West Ham manager. 36 goals in 115 appearances, so it's good, it's strong, it doesn't blow you away, but it looks good. But I took a deeper dive here. So league appearances only, it's 27 goals in 85 appearances. However, only 48 were starts, the rest of them were obviously substitute appearances. But in those substitution appearances, only one game was less than 10 minutes. So he got plenty of game time under Lopetegui at Sevilla. Even when he wasn't starting, he was still coming off the bench on a regular basis and getting plenty of minutes. So overall, under Lopetegui at Sevilla, he was scoring a goal every 170 minutes on average, which is a really good number. You know, a goal every two games is absolutely fantastic. But I started thinking, how does this compare? If he was to come to West Ham and replicate those numbers, how would he get on? So I thought, I wonder how the Premier League is. Who's hit 170 minutes per goal in the Premier League this season? And there's five players that would be rough company. Son, Oli Watkins, Mateta, whose numbers have definitely been boosted a lot recently, Awoni and Huang. Those are, that would be his company at the Premier League. 
But I got intrigued and I ended up down a rabbit hole as I often do when it comes to football. I'll be looking up a player, I'll see a club, I'll click on it, then I'll look at the squad, I'll click on another. But before you know it, I'm five, six clicks away from where I started looking up a random player that played in the Premier League in 2002 that has gone off to play Belgian football and they've gone off a bit. Anyway, I go down rabbit holes. I thought, I wonder. How does this compare to the all-time Premier League greats? All the players in the Premier League, minutes per goal, where would he sit with 170? There's only three players in the Premier League that have achieved bang on 170, and they are. Now, I must be clear, I'm not saying N. Nesri is going to come to West Ham and replicate these numbers, right? It's just a bit of fun. Lukaku, Podolski, and Cristiano Ronaldo. That's not bad company, is it? Um, slightly better. And Fernando Torres, Robbie Fowler and Carlos Tevez and not quite as good as Andy Cole, Jurgen Klinsmann and Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank hey, not bad company but I'll tell you what confused me when looking at that sitting next to Hasselbank four clubs, so that Leeds, Chelsea, Middlesbrough Leeds, Chelsea, Middlesbrough I could not think of the fourth Premier League club for Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank anyway, it turns out it was Charlton 25 games and 2 goals told you I end up down rabbit holes when it comes to these things, but I did not know Hasselbank. Normally when you say that, you go, oh yeah, I remember it now. Nothing, no memories came back to me. I cannot recall it whatsoever. I'm just trusting it actually happened. But in terms of N. Nesri, do I believe the rumour? A little bit, but I think I'm a little bit wary of it because it almost makes too much sense to some extent. But I think it's important that while I want Tim Stiden to have controlled final say over the transfer window, there's got to be a relationship between Lopetegui and Tim Stein. There's got to be a bit of synergy there. And I think Nesri ticks a lot of what Tim Stein would be looking for as well, probably. In terms of his numbers, his data, and that is what Stein uses as identifiers for players. And Nesri's ticking those boxes as well, actually. So the data side of it is strong. And then you've got the relationship with the manager is strong. The asking price, according to media at the minute, is round about twenty million, which isn't anything too expensive. So I think it's ticking all the boxes here. But on the assumption that Lopetegui would be playing the same tactics he did at Sevilla at West Ham next season, I would like to see this transfer happen. And it's based on everything I've just mentioned, other people's opinions, his history with Lopetegui, what I think the squad needs. Because I think we do need another striker. And we've seen that his tactics works. And as we is able to flourish under Lopetegui in the way that he plays. So this just makes sense to me. The profile looks good. He's just turned 26 years old. And it's not one of those ones where he's 26. And by the time we sign him and he pl actually plays for us in August, he will be 27. It's not one of them. He's just turned 26. So a lot of these numbers that he's produced at Sevilla under Lopetegui, he's done it when he's in his early 20s. How's that for quick maths, eh? So N. Nesri, it might be the eighth transfer window we've been linked to him, but it's only the second transfer window that actually, I believe this rumour a little bit. Now, he wouldn't be my number one choice. That guy is already in the Premier League, not playing first team football, but that's more for a wish list video. But this is the transfer rumour video, and it's time to discuss more transfer rumours. But before we do that, just want to point in the direction of Manscaped. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, ladies as well, listen up, because while this is a male grooming company with fantastic products aimed at gentlemen it's father's day next month now i'm not a way to encourage you to buy a pube trimmer for your old man do not worry because i'm not sure anybody would buy their old man a pube trimmer for father's day maybe you maybe you will maybe you think your dad would like that maybe he's still a bit of a top shagger however what i do want to point in the direction of and this is because of gonzo is the beard trimmer if your old man has a beard trimmer then take a look at this this is the beard hedger pro kit so in it you get the shaver which you can see on your screen but you also get shampoo conditioner oil balm as well as a bag but you also get a free beard accessory pack which includes the brush comb and beard scissors so as you can see there it's 160 pounds at the minute over on manscaped however while you're on Manscaped, if you were to use our code HAMMERSCHAT20, you would get 20% off everything, which is a further of 32 quid, taking all the way down to £128. That's for everything. That's for the complete kit, plus free shipping worldwide. So it costs you £128, but you're saving £90 on all the items if you were to buy them individually. So you've got your beard 
trimmer over there with all the gadgets that you need for a fantastic facial hair. So your old man's got a beard, there you go. There's also other goods on there for Father's Day, such as a bit of cologne, there's boxer shorts, there's a nail trimmer kits, you've got the weed whacker, which is for your nose and your ear, in case your dad is a retired shagger, he's getting on a little bit now. Hairs are now coming out of unwanted places. Manscaped have everything for, for grooming for males. So head on over there and use the code HAMMERSCHAT20 to get 20% off everything. We're treating you so you can treat your old man. Right then, on to transfer rumours and other players I have never seen play. But unlike Ken Nesri who have heard of, I've not heard of some of these. So if you have, please get involved in the comments below. First up, we got Braga striker Simon Bonza. 27 year old who scored 21 in 27 this season that looks fantastic I had a little look of course i went down the rabbit hole for him and his, his numbers have been okay this is his best season though he's never done this good he's the last couple of seasons at braga he has hit double figures 14 and 11 so he's been consistent at scoring there we're being linked to him we're also being linked to nice midfielder kepfran i think that's how you say kepfran 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 uh Turam. Now, we were linked to him a year ago to replace Declan Rice, and Arsenal were heavily linked to him. Liverpool were even further linked to him than us and Arsenal were. And last summer, he was €40 million, Euros, which put everybody off. So it was like, no, thank you. We don't want that. 23-year-old midfielder, complete midfielder, according to his manager. Not according to me. I really should start watching French football. It'll make the transfer room show a lot easier if I watched French football. But it, please get involved if you know about him. But anyway, now he's only 20 million euros because he's only got one year to go on his contract. And he's been strongly linked to West Ham at the minute. Obviously, Liverpool are sort of out the running because, well, they boosted their midfield last season. They got in Endo, Gravenberg, Sabozlai, McAllister. So they're not interested in him anymore. And since then, Schmatke, who was the... Uh, sporting director has left now you've got Richard Hughes going in there so the transfer strategy at Liverpool is different those who wanted players last summer are no longer involved this summer so we are sort of the front runners of the Premier League if you like that's been linked to Nice's to Ram so you know about him get involved now interestingly do you remember a couple of months ago it was reported that Tim Stadium was setting up a scouting network in Belgium that was the report. And I remember going back, I'm keeping an eye on that one then, because whenever transfer rumours come out of Belgium, not our side of things, of the Belgian side of things, linking us to their players, that's where I'm going to start to pay a little bit of attention on the assumption that the reports we've set up in Belgium are true. It would make sense to do that. There's been a lot of success stories come out of Belgium recently, and there's good value for money in that league. So it would make sense that we are looking over at that league, thinking, can we get a, a piece of this action, please? And we're finally being linked to one, Zeno de Bost, uh, de Bast, de Bast, Zeno de Bast, 20-year-old centre-back from Anderlecht, another player with only one year left on his contract, which means that it would be a bit of a bargain there for somebody. I've never heard of him. Now, I will be doing a video in the coming weeks with somebody who, I set him a task ages ago, so excuse me, can you come up with a few players in the Belgian league that West Ham could go get, in your opinion, or should go get. And he's done it. And we've not recorded the video yet. However, we shall do very soon. Maybe he'll have Zeno de Bast on his list. I'll certainly ask about him. But that's who we're being linked to. Now, Sean Weston during the week said that um, priority for Lopetegui and Tim Stiden this summer is two centre-backs and one striker. So that's the positions we are partly targeting. And The Athletic did a report today regarding the squad. And in there, this is stuck in there actually, that Lopetegui wanted, when he was at Wolves, Lopetegui wanted Mavropanos, which is interesting because he also wanted a Gerd when he was at Sevilla. So according to the report, if the transfer rumours were true, Lopetegui's got two centre-backs he really wanted at different clubs at West Ham now. So bad news for Kurt Zuma, bad news for Nefa Gerd, who was hoping to leave because the manager might fancy you sticking around for another year but good news for mad for panos and lastly roshane from the athletic is reporting today that michael antonio has interest from saudi and the mls i'll be honest with you it depends on the fee how much money show us the color of your money i guess but on the assumption it's not a big fee i think i'd be inclined to keep him 
His contract expires at the end of next season, presently. And I think I would offload Danny Ings, but I would keep Mikel Antonio and I'd bring in another striker. A big purchase as well. Somebody that's going to bench Antonio. And the reasons I'd be keeping Antonio around is because A, I don't think there's much value there. And B, I think he's performed really well this season actually when fit I think he's done well now I do think he's done well in short periods of a game for, for an hour and then he tires pretty quickly so I don't want to see him starting loads next season but I do think he'd be a fantastic option on the bench because he can play down the middle but he can also play on the right or left as well he can play out wide and actually a Mikel Antonio for 20 minutes of a game is somewhat quite appealing to me but then there's C Lopetegui wanted him at Wolves and while it was only a transfer rumour we have to remember that in the January transfer window Antonio was sat there basically confirming that clubs wanted him he's done it two years in a, in a row now but um, Antonio didn't, didn't shy away from the prospect of leaving West Ham and he made it very clear that certain clubs were looking at him and he, he gave it a whole we'll see what happens but he was he was bang up for a move and Lopetegui's Wolves were the ones that wanted him. So there was a reason Lopetegui was intrigued. And the Wolves fans that I spoke to stated that he likes to get involved. And he likes to have a conversation with the player before they jo they join. So if Lopetegui sort of rubber stamped that, he obviously saw something at Antonio. thought, I want that guy at my club. So I'm intrigued as to how Lopetegui would use him. And Nesri and Antonio up front next season... I've seen worse strike partnerships or worse options at Premier League clubs. Anyway, that's it for today's uh, today's transfer rumours. Gons has covered more, um, so if you haven't seen his video, go check it out. But if you've enjoyed this video, please do drop a like on by clicking thumbs up, subscribe when you're around here. And if you've heard of, if you have heard of Simon Bonza, Kep Fram Turam, Zeno de Baust, or you just wish to give your opinion on Antonio leaving or Yusuf Henesri, get involved in the comments and I'll catch up with you later. Yeah.